these two teams are relatively close to each other in the the uh, second and third positions of Group A. Hasn't really been the case. Um, really getting getting it handed to him here in the lane. His and health currently is actually very low. <laughs> he only has four stacks of active armor. Oh, as we missed all right. Blood. 23 Savage in the bot lane gets taken out. But I think he's thinking ahead here, and he wants to have it for pushing towers and mm -hmm. uh, against other heroes in team fights later on. And he maybe feels like he's already accomplished the kill that was possible. Mid lane, we have a TP from Yatoro. They get the stun off onto Makoto, and that is going to be a big kill for Laurel, who... I mean, in terms of CS, relatively even, but this puts him a little ahead now that he's able to get that kill, and they can pressure the tier 1 tower to boot. Collapse, bottom, gets the stomp, and then the kisses. Uh, that oh. is unhealable damage. Uh, 23 Savage, he's not farming because Team Spirit have come in full force here to the bot lane. They actually scan, so they know the 23 Savage is here, but weren't able to kill off the trees, and now the rotations have come in the form of Tusk and Marana, which turns into a kill onto Mira. Laurel might have something to say about this, though. He getting close to finishing his Greaves. Pretty damn early Greaves as bottom lane. So after all that, 23 Savage yeah. does get taken out. That was extremely patient from Team Spirit. I this is potentially 23's slowest battle theory in this year, right? Like, he's, he's not even close. Yep. It's 16 minutes in. Oh, we're going to see the arrow into the Earth Split. That's a lot of damage. Let's have a double snowball coming out. And they're going to be able to find the Snapfire pretty shortly. No, he actually gets the cook after the high guard. It ends up being a double kill for Laurel instead. And now he got the Mortimer's Kisses going off onto Jabs. Do they have the vision? They do. And a double oh hook stop to follow. God, this game might man. be over already. It is 8k at 16 and a half minutes. Interesting to think about that, you know, he's a magus, right? He steals magic, but he can steal <laughs> the ability to jump into trees like a monkey. It says something about evolution, yeah. I think. It's devolution, oh boy, if talk anything. About evolution. 23 Savage, hoof stomp, tried to dodge it, but that is going to be another easy pickoff. They are scouting him out, and they can stop his TP, obviously, with the punch. Nope, he's going to have to kill him twice. And the Aegis. He pops the BKB. The he's going to right click. Makoto is just no. dead. He's just dead. One oh, you bit off too much the... there. Oh, okay. And now they're going to clean up Ollie as well with the help of the Stampede to get there a little bit faster. A nice stun mid Timber Chain. Jabs, I mean, he's a bit tanky now. He's going to get stunned Another again stun mid Timber mid Chain. chain. Oh. oh my goodness. Team Spirit are absolutely styling over Talon in this game number one. If Collapse, let's just, we can talk about Aghanim Scepter for a bit now, of course. And they're in, uh, although he might be going for the BKB first. We'll see. Gets off the hoof stomp, double edge, and uh, the stolen Whirling Death does quite a bit of damage next to trees. Same how much damage the spell deals with his spell amp. And now they can just focus on the racks. But here's the buyback onto the Elder Titan. This might be the last stand for Talon. Mira oh, this is not a good ground. snowball. Snowball on the wrong side, mister. Collapse has been drinking, and he's ready to bring out the whip. Ollie, oh, looks like he's going to get stunned by the cookie in the meantime. Jabs is doing a decent job of forcing them out for the time being. He's going to get hooked on mid-timber chain again, and now bursted down to the ground. Mortimer's Kisses, not doing a whole lot, but again, Team Spirit up 18 to 2. This is a 21k lead. It's going to be pretty hard for them to throw this one. No, it matters not. So full Here set of racks for Team Spirit. One Holy. step closer for Collapse to get his Aghanim Scepter, which we're all really excited about, of course. If you put him oh. in a cart and you can bring him, it's like a petting zoo for the enemy, except he tears off your face. That's part of yeah. the attraction. Okay, we got Wukong's Command coming out. Nice double Good balance arrow. strike. Good shards, but they're not inside Wukong's Command. As the Undying is going to be the first to fall, but I believe Team Spirit are still going to want to fight. Nope, they lose their Rubik as well. Now it's a 3v5. Sprout Talent, good luck, and they take off, And they take out Q. Of a good old smoke. Still alive. <laughs> it's still he alive. Might be in trouble though. Oh, four step out of the pit. Into the roach pit they go. Who's gonna get the Aegis is the question. It's Makoto. Makoto got it. He got it. Elder Titan ult does a decent amount of damage, but Makoto and Talon steal Roche and the Aegis. Okay. They might have I to mean... focus down Maposhka. He's all alone, so the 420 dream is dead. Six to nineteen. The Taro, he's gonna get stomped. Nice cookie. cookie will dodge the arrow. 
Yotaro has his hand of Midas. Can't use it on enemy heroes yet. Maybe next patch. As Laurel wants a little bit of damage. Oh, 23 Savage jumps in, but that's a buyback from the Centauri. What can he stampede oh! if he wants? Look at this huge! What a stop! Jesus Christ, that's a lot of damage coming out on top of that Centaur. And they're gonna clean this up pretty easily. Three <laughs> all it required oh was one God, buyback, so three sick kills. Of both teams actually. The flamethrower. Maybe he got mm, it actually. I don't know. Maybe he got it. it. Yeah. Yeah, it could be. Oh, that's a Mortimer's Kiss, his kill. I thought he was older than that. Damn it. No hope for me. Well, Yatoro gets the melee racks in the top. Obviously, Talon can't really fight without their Monkey King. Uh, 23 Savage. Ooh, all right. They're trying a little to... A bit of a poke. 17 yeah, four staffs. staffs being used simultaneously there. Clubs, so they just took oh, the I axe see. and used it as a club. Oh, but... hoof stomp okay, on absolutely nothing. Don't worry, he still has his cart available. That's true. Hitch a ride. Who is hitching what it today? Could, what if you could cart yourself and just stand there? You're God, just, that's useful. You just, you just hop oh, in the cart. Four staff to safety. Oh. oh, he carts the Rubik. He's a pig as well. Oh my goodness, the farm. The farm build. The farm build is online for Team Spirit. Hoofstomp is there as well. Timber saw. Oh, he gets saved by the snowball, but they're going to yeah. go back into the arms of Collapse, who has Hitch a Ride again available, Cinderin. Very important spell to use. He's inside the snowball now. He gets sheeped. Four staffed. They really do have a lot of four staff. <laughs> All right, going for the Mega... They still have a range racks in the top lane. Wukong's command comes out. This is going to delay things a bit. Makoto can't really get anything off here. He might fight 23 with this. Yeah, he could. Yotaro's no, going to get the melee racks. So here comes the punch. Here comes the last stand for Talon. Trying to focus down this Nature's Prophet, but he pops Satanic. He's just right-clicking now. Wonderbus Kiss is coming as well. Centaur, he wants to use the Hitch a Ride. He finally does and then dies while trying to cart away his teammate that was at full HP already. Useless cart, but amazing play from Collapse. Just love to see it. And this is Mega Creeps. This has been GG for literally 27 minutes, Cinderin. Game one is now over. Oh Team Spirit God. up 1-0. I mean, I think the thing is, after TI, when Spirit had that small room, right? <laughs> now that they have the big rooms, they don't know what to do with all the space. <laughs> so they kind of need to limit the inhabitable space in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Mira will trade whatever he can every time into Silencer, but Talon are going to stand strong and just force him back every time. Be careful not to overextend. As oh open. my! That was that is unexpected. Not the first one I would have ever expected in top lane. Yatoro has to use his whirling axes. Actually, stuck inside the creeps. Oh, oh my god! They got a full oh surround. They did. Snowball coming in, keeping him at bay, and that is the second death for Yatoro. They might yeah. just get a return kill now. TP's coming in from Q. Not gonna save him. They needed that badly. But if they can get the kill here, Coil onto two. First of the game from Makoto. Whirling Axes. Providing a little bit of cover for Yatoro, but he's gonna get blown up by Makoto. And now Maposhka looks to be potentially next on the list. Has very little mana to speak of. Another yeah, Illusory Orb available. Damage. And yeah, that should be a double kill for Makoto. So great rotation, and even though Troll gets something out of that. Actually, there are other two lanes. We've been focusing a lot on the troll lane, but Bat and Tide both have excellent farm. Um, and this top, oh. bottom lane is not easy for Void. And in the mid that, lane, yeah. Puck oh. inside the smokescreen, Cinderman. Sorry to interrupt your amazing point you're making, but that is a big kill onto Makoto. Here's going to be the trade. Maposhko falls as well, but that's two supports for the mid laner. Q oh, oh, pops the fairy fire, fire, fire will live. And Ollie out of mana. Laurel still has Firefly ending now, though, but looks like he'll find that kill nonetheless. So double nice kill for Laurel. From the department. It's just non stop anchor smash, preventing him from getting CS. They're going to try to TP down and look for a kill here now. Ravage. Oh, he gets the Ravage. Oh, <laughs> he hits Q as well. Doesn't even know he's there. The kill onto Void is big for Collapse. He gets out the watermelons. More TP's coming, so this will likely lead to the death of Collapse, but well worth it for him. Is whenever it gets to these situations with the 1v1, he's just... He's ruining his lane, right? 15 to mm -hmm. 9. Oh boy! He has to use a Chronosphere in the top lane defensively, but now he's inside Cogs. Oh, if he Lasso dies here, is still tragic. available. 
Troll axes are there, and down goes 23 Savage. That is death number two. And Makoto, he has to be a bit careful here. Able to get to the other side of the lane. Poshkan is level six, already used the hook shot. Laurel, he's gonna spot him if he puts... I right, guess the waning rift off. Another TP coming. Chronosphere's not up for another... Well... Another 60 seconds. He actually jumps into the cogs. This might be the death of 23 Savage again. Has time walk again, though. So able to get out this time. Collapse. Very tanky. As more TPs come in from Talon. He has Ravage again. Collapse. He He's likely dead. is going to die, though. So the Ravage would have been wasted. But they're going to try to turn this around potentially on the Q. But Mira is going to be focused on inside the Sprout. Gets off the tricks of the trade. Silence right now. Pops the Fairy Fire. That base regen is not going to be enough for him to survive. So two dead for Team Spirit. As the time dilation continuing to slow Laurel. And the Invis rune spawning right ahead of him. Just taunting his dead corpse now. So three picked up kills here for Talon. They've done a really and good job making uh, Mira feel unimpactful uh -oh. and risky this game. They get the punch up onto Yatoro, but the flame break giving him a little extra space, but there's the Chronosphere. Ravage is not going to be there in time. We'll have to hold on to that, so... Battle Fury well, delayed a little bit longer for Team Spirit. As Laurel, he's going to get a sacrifice here from Ori, or Oli, I should say. Like, Spirit's lineup still pretty slow. Like, they still need time. Troll needs to build up, All right? They're going to... I'm collab. I don't know who finds who here. He's well, it's a 1v3. Trouble. Yeah. He pops the hood, but it's not going to keep right. him alive. Easy oh, kill really for Talon. Covering. Yeah, and, and this is so big for 23. Yeah. It's part of all these moves. He's got his Midas. You know, he's trying to get a Maelstrom soon. As they finally find a pick on Makoto Ooh. here. Okay. You can be a little bit calm in the game and not be too stressed out about needing to output too much. Oh, well, we're going to see the first dart of the game. Into a hook shot, into smoke screen. Yeah, Tusk has no chance unless there's a four staff nearby. It gets flame break. That's a okay. Good Glaive near though. Oh, no, Glaive near onto two. The big reinforcements from Talon, so they turn this around onto both supports. And they go down instantly, and somehow Q lives. Has some idea this might be happening. Oh, I say that. There's the dart. Initiation from Laurel. He has his lasso. TP's coming in. There's the global silence, but the instant ravage from Collapse because the Greaves dispel beautifully down Chronosphere. Now onto two, but also his teammate. Although Puck is going to be just fine. They're focusing down Laurel. That looks to be an easy trade at the very least, so it's a one for one. And now the clockwork falls, and the rest of Team Spirit need to get the hell out of here. Nice blink strike to Collapse, but there's the dust. Actually does not hit Mira at all, so he's probably fine. And Collapse looks to be in the this? same boat. Oh, that's a little bit wild here. Makoto. Yeah, dart. Darted. Do they have the follow-up, though? Okay, yeah, Warling Axe is there. And Mira, he's still continuing to take damage here. There's a Whirling Axe to prevent a little bit of right-click action. Mira gets one more dart, but he's ticking down. Finally falls. Makoto gets off the Illusory Orb. Troll. Already popped the ult to try to get some right-click damage, and they're going to be able to take out 23 Savage, who stuck around a little bit too long. Very back-and-forth fight. Hookshot. <laughs> Trolls stuck inside the shards, but they're going to be able to take out another member of Talon here, but it's going to cost them the Troll Warlord. And now everybody inside the cogs together. Jabs is in a lot of trouble, trying to get a residual kill before he drops, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> Everybody's dying. Wait, is he going Jesus. To he, All the I Greaves so? are saving yeah. him. The Ataro will almost certainly claim the Aegis. Actually, they want to try to contest now, but I think they're going to be a little bit too late. This Triance is are showing the Chrono Sphere, but he gets the Aegis. He gets the Roche kill, so the Chrono is kind of wasted. No damage really done inside that Chrono. And they're going to be able to take out the Ricky to start things out. So it's a 4v5 in favor of Talon, but some big spells on cooldown. Big Ravage comes out, and that is a dead, faceless void. Makoto getting chased by Yatoro, looking for the net, but. We'll have to find a different target instead, as Laurel already used his lasso. As the rest of Team Spirit want to try to chase here, get the perpetual slow now onto the tusk, but the puck being very annoying. There's Laurel going to get glyped near, but here comes the whirling axes. He's going to get punched into the air. So that is a dead bat rider, but now they're going to turn their sights onto Jabs inside his own Sprout Yataro with the most useless ult in the game. That's not his fault. That's just Troll Warlord. That's the design. The BKB basically wasted here as well. 
Lots of back and forth. I'm not even sure who's really favors in the end, but uh, we see the faceless void dying is a pretty big deal. But we can see the smoke from both sides. So I think whoever wins this fight will likely get the road. Kodo gets off a nice silence. landing rift onto four. No follow up yet though. You can see Nature's proper order to use the old coil only on one. Gleipnir as well on one, but oh, there's a Kronos here. Several heroes here. Tide dies initially, but they find the lasso. But the global silence is there to potentially save him. But no, he gets bashed down into oblivion. Buyback from the clockwork now. There's a flame break. Bringing them back into the, the arms of Team Spirit, but looks like they want to reset. Naposhka, he does get off the hook shot, but there's not going to be follow-up. Nobody can close the gap here. Considering they full-on just killed the Tide first off, sure they trade a couple buybacks, but it's actually not that bad for Spirit if they get this Aegis, but I think they're actually trying oh, they to hold. They want to try. Tusk, he has to be careful. He's going to get Abyssal Bladed. The Whirling Axe has come out as well. Makoto, wow, who is this? Just stuck in no That's man's land. Laurel, Laurel in the is middle dead. Of nowhere. Yataro doesn't have his ult for another 10 seconds. Hookshot's gonna buy him a little bit of time, but he is just gonna have to right click his way, but he's not gonna be able to What's do so. 80 on? seconds, he is dead. And this is gonna open up Roche for Talon despite not having their void. And this double damage is <laughs> about to despawn in the bot lane. As Mira is gonna oh, continue to get chased profitable. here. All right, we see the first use of Tendrils of the Deep from Collapse. Continuing to get chased, but he should be fine. I don't think they can turn this around, surely. I mean, they do have Ravage. Perhaps they could. Snowball. On to Collapse with the Gleipnir as well. Sure he would love to grab that. They're currently sitting on Spell Prism, which is obviously also amazing. And there's the sleep. There. They they the They're actually going to focus Tusk for now. Lasso's there, but there's a Chronosphere on to two, trying to take down Laurel first. He's already at half HP, and he dies shortly after the Chrono dissipates. Yataro still has his ult available. He's going to use it right after that. After the Abyssal Blade, McPosh comes in with his ult as well. The Ravage to follow. They're stun locking everybody on Talon. That's the first life for 23 Savage. Makoto's still alive and healthy, still with the overwhelming blink to go. And now continue to apply pressure to the faceless one. He's going to get silenced as well. He's getting bashed into oblivion. Yatoro double kill. Ollie is going to be next on the list. That's a triple for Yatoro. You talked about how 23 Savage is feeling confident. He just got killed twice in a row. They're playing a barracks unless they can... I don't know how they hold this. Yeah, well, that could be annoying. He's going to get slept inside of the smoke. The Eon Disc goes off, but it's not going to be enough. He's dead for 80. does have buyback, though. Nature's Prophet's up in five. Faceless Void in 20. They're going to fortify, but now that these stacks of Fervor are stacking up on this melee racks, I do agree with you that this will be at least one set. But of course, even with Faceless Void back, they know that Chrono is down for another 30 seconds. Yeah, I think Yatoro, he was like stutter stepping a bit. He's not completely sure if this is a play, but... Oh, the lasso onto is. Tusk. Global Times are trying to counteract this. There's the buyback now onto the puck. 23 Savage pops the BKB, trying to right-click Yatoro, but is against the troll. He's actually on the wrong side of the cliff now. Mira trying to provide a little bit of cover. The coil onto two. He's actually stuck inside the shards now. Pops his ult just in time, but that's likely only going to delay the inevitable. And finally, the Chrono Sir comes out onto two heroes. He's going to focus on the first looks like he's gonna get that relatively easily and now the break to follow so no crack and shell for tidehunter three for one a great hold from talon and 23 savage and company should be able to get this full set of racks mid they can go top tier two still resides in the bot lane yeah and they have it's the high ground all advantage about the jump. if mikoto finds them first and gets a great silence Ooh. this could be huge oh, just ships in the night right now oh my god oh, but they run oh, right into jabs, in jabs. But he goes in Viz. Here comes the Chronos for and the initiation. Ricky's dead right off the bat. Gleipnir inside. They get collapse as well. He has to buy back. So that's a double buyback from Team Spirit as Laurel. He does use his lasso pretty successfully. Abyssal Blade, nice four-step attempt to try to save jabs, but he's gonna get hook shot and he's gonna get bashed down. He has to buy back now. Laurel getting silenced in the meantime by the waning rift as the the Firefly is still up, but the Whirling Axe is trying to save the life of the Troll Warlord, but he's going to get decimated. Now another Chronosphere Second coming out Chrono. from the Void. They're focusing down Collapse, who has yet to use Ravage, by the way. That is a dieback onto two heroes for Team Spirit. And now the Roche is available for the pickings. That's the final Wait, Outer Prophet. Tower. Wait, how many Hexes do they have? Two Hexes? So Prophet and Puck have Hexes. 
Oh, there's the jump in. Whoa, okay. Snowball, very what a very beat. What in the, the world, world is, is this? That? Hookshot's gonna miss. Q is gonna awkwardly run away with BKB activated. What the hell was that? Yeah, that was just straight up batshit crazy, but he didn't die, so... Oh, it wasn't okay. bad, it was tough. Oh, it was time to try again. <laughs> yep, they're gonna go for it. 23 Savage going in, he has his Chrono, gets it off, but the Ravage goes off first. Uses the refresher, down goes Tide. No buyback this time for Mr. Collapse. There's the second Chrono, not the best, but they get a kill from it nonetheless, and they can go for the Megas. Or for the second set of racks, I should say. It does work out. It looks really awkward, but he survived just long enough that the enemy team was in a position that they could get chronoed. So, you know, I mean, hats off for him to just having the balls to just go in for that. It looks crazy, but it's actually going to end the game here. They just needed someone to lead. Mikoto's disc will be popped. And yep, near on to several Megas. heroes, but Megas are all but insured here for talent. And still Aegis intact for 45 seconds. And it's still a 5 versus 3. 6 if you want to. Oh, they're going to kick back the Troll Warlord, who is stun locked and dead. Down goes Yotoro. GG's called. So this, this is kind of what we expected, a 1-1 one -one split. But maybe not in this yep. way. <laughs> Game right. 1 was Team Spirit just dumpstering Talon. And Game 2 was quite...